Good godly morning. Can we talk? Today during my study time this morning, one of the things that God put into my spirit is mind your own business. Mind your own business. One of the hardest things for us to do as people is to mind our own business. We run people off with their mouths in that trap. Don't nobody want to be bothered with us because we're always in everybody else's business. Isn't it amazing? You're running into people and they know everything about your business and they don't know how to take care of their own business. They see your children and they think they're so bad. They see your situation and think it's so rough. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Always got an opinion about something that's going on in your business and don't know how to take care of their own business. Mind your own business. I was studying in the book of Luke and God was reminding me in Luke, uh, where was I? Luke chapter 6 and 38. And he was reminding us to be kind and to treat people, you know, basically how we want to be treated. You know, and reminding us whatever kindness we put out and gentleness we put out, God is going to bless us with that, you know. And so we have to learn how to just stop being so opinionated. I've never in my life seen so many people in this generation, in this day and age, have so many opinions about stuff that they don't even know nothing about. You know, you see somebody and you see the situation that they're in, and here you go running your mouth. You got an opinion of what they should have done. You got an opinion of how they can get out of it. You got an opinion of this, an opinion of that. And don't let it be somebody that have children of their own. And then they're telling you how to discipline your children. They're telling you about your daughter. They're telling you about your son and your grandkids. And then you sit there and look at them. You're thinking in your mind, now I know they're not talking about my grandchildren and my situation. Look at your daughter. You have no control of the situation. there. You haven't even given her any kind of guidance. And then you want to come try to give me some guidance in my situation. Mind your own business. Take care of the situation that God has allowed you to be in. Pray for your family. Ministry starts at home. We want to go out and minister to everybody else's family, but it's like we're scared and we're intimidated to tackle the demons and the things that's going on in our own life. Mind your own business. Be kind to people when you see them. And another thing, I can't understand for the life of me, thank you, Jesus, why would people come up to you when you lose a loved one and say, are you all right? No, I'm not all right. What do you mean am I all right? Of course I'm not all right. My loved one just passed. I need you to pray for me. Obviously, you're not tapping into your spiritual realm like you so callie. Because if you were, you wouldn't come to me and say, are you okay? I know it's been two years. And you know, past the hair's back, but are you all right? How you doing? How you think I'm doing? How do you think I'm doing? Uh, my best friend, God called him on in. You know, we were together 20 years. You know, my, my partner, my, my, you know, my sidekick, my husband, my loved one. No, I'm not all right. But what I am doing is trusting God and I'm leaning and depending on God so every day I can draw strength from God. You know what I'm talking about if you've lost a loved one they're coming to you. Are you all right? No, you're not all right. You know, well, a time heals all wounds. No, it's not the time that's going to heal all wounds because when you're with somebody, you really love somebody and you miss somebody that's close to you. Time not going to heal no all wounds. No, what you do is God will allow you to be content at the state you're in. You become acceptance of where you are. You know, learn how to mind your own business. And if you see somebody, learn how to pray for them. Don't pray on them. When you see somebody down, don't go down there kicking them and graveling, you know, stepping on them while they're already down. I can't understand it. We do not know how to mind our own business. All in everybody else's business. Everybody else's situation. Well, you know what? You don't understand, Pastor Terrence. I'm just being concerned. You're not being concerned. You're being nosy. Because if truth be told, if you look at all your children, your grandchildren, you ain't got to look far. You can even look in the mirror. There's plenty of correction that can be done in your life. Plenty of correction. And don't let you tell somebody when they're talking too much or in your business. You know what? I think you need to mind your own business. I know she didn't say that. I know he didn't say that. Yes, they did. And chances are they're right. You need to mind your own business. You need to take care of your own situation. I'm quite sure you look around, you have a daughter who got children that's not married. You got a son that have a children that's not married. He got a baby mama drama he dealing with. But you go to church and you see somebody else and you start, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. Can you believe that? I know she didn't get up and testify about that. Oh my goodness. Mm -mm, mm -mm. See, I would have handled that totally different. I would have did this. I would have did that. Well, if you would have did this and you would have did that, how come you're afraid to talk to your own children about it? How come you're afraid to step your own grandson and your own granddaughter and correct them? You too busy in everybody else's business. Too busy over there in somebody else's backyard. Get in your backyard and clean it out.
It's a lot of filth and dirt back there that needs to be cleaned. Learn how to mind your own business. You know, I see these young people and they this and they that because they have more distractions than we had. When I was growing up, we didn't have Internet. We didn't have YouTube and we didn't have, you know, Facebook and all that other kind of stuff. Twitter, we didn't have that. You know, we went outside and we played and we played with each other outside. We played with the neighbors and it was OK. But this is a different day and age we live in. in. And God is allowing the atmosphere to shift. We got to shift with it. And how do we know how to shift with it? We got to pray. We got to stay in our word. We got to study. And we, once you study and pray and stay in your word, you will know that God wants you to look in the mirror and the word is for you to be corrected. He said, once you've been converted, then you strengthen your brother. He didn't say get the word and go out there and offend people. That's why a lot of people don't want to go to church. Because we're so busy running them away with that big mouth of ours, that trap we got. We don't know how to mind our own business. Somebody come in and you see them. Or somebody testify about they had an abortion. Oh, I can't believe it. They going to hell. They didn't kill God's kids. But you sitting there look to the side. And your daughter got about 10 children by five different men. But you don't see nothing wrong with that. Sin is sin in God's eyesight. Learn how to mind your own business. Learn how to correct your children. Learn how to correct your grandchildren. Learn how to look in the mirror and correct yourself. And then go out and give godly and spiritual advice. The greatest thing that we can do is learn how to keep our mouths closed. Keep our mouths off people's situation. And live the word of God. Let God show through our light. Let him be the light and not your mouth. Learn how to mind your own business. My gosh, thank you, Jesus. When God gave me that, I said, Lord, I thank you. I got to be the first partaker. Stay in my lane. And I said, Lord, if this is me, forgive me for my sins when I have done this. You know, not if, but when I did it, I repented instantly because I know I've been over there and I have said something that I should not have said to somebody trying to call myself being so encouraging to them and they didn't got offended. So I instantly repented. We got to learn how to mind our own business. Take care of your business first. Like the Bible said, when you've been converted, then you strengthen your brother and your sister. If you have been converted and you still being uh, chasing and checked in in that area, you stay in that area and you get converted and strengthened first. And then you'll go out and know how to correct with love, compassion. You won't be offended. Learn how to mind your own business and keep your mouth off other people's situation. If you don't know what you're talking about, quit assuming, quit guessing, and quit thinking that you know everything when you do not. Ask questions, and if they don't want you to know, be prayerful. If they tell you to mind your business, then mind your business. Thank God for each and every one of you. I love you with the love of the Lord. We got to learn how to mind our own business and stop offending people.